uh, back to Candlekeep Mysteries, Chats and Cats. Uh, I am lucky to call myself your dungeon mistress and uh, dungeon mother of all cats. Wow, you can tell it's been a week, huh? Uh, of She's, Thays, and Faze this evening as we take a deep dive back into the world of Candlekeep. Episode number three, I believe. We're finally on episode three. Uh, this is a 12-week limited series, minus a few, that will explore every corner of this realm and my players' brains here on Friday nights at 7 p.m. EST through September. And without further ado, uh, just real quick before we begin, just because it's been a minute, I would like everybody to add a brief character description to uh, introducing yourselves this evening. Just say, you know, your name, your pronouns, where we can find you on the internet, and then a brief snippet about your character, if that's a fun fact, if that's their height, if that's their favorite color. Uh, you all do what you guys want to do this evening. Uh, I think I'm going to start... Um, JJ, do you want to go first this evening? We'll start with you. We're, we'll go on the other side today. <laughs> That's fine by me. Hello, everyone. My name is JJ, and I'm your friendly neighborhood TTRPG chef. Yes. Um, you can find me on Twitter at uh, JJ underscore Cray, where I post a lot of um, content for my cooking streams um, and a whole bunch of other craziness because that's just me um and today i'm going to be playing um trouble tea leaf who is a halfling rogue um and i am our the group's little agent of chaos so i'm just here to have a good time and uh we'll see what happens yeah i'm excited you're a darn good one buddy uh thank you for being here perfect baba yaga you're up next if you're okay going love the wig this evening go ahead yeah, uh, thank you. Um, Baba Yaga, she, they pronouns. I'm playing Soaring Snake Hadoni or Soaring, Soaring Snack, uh, depends on who you ask. Uh, and she is an Aragonasi uh, who was raised by three parents. And she has a very loving home that she goes back to and visits often. Oh. That's so darn wholesome. Wonderful. Uh, Hive Goblin, what are you up to outside of Girls Run These Worlds, buddy? Uh, hey, y'all. Uh, I'm Sarah, aka the Hive Goblin, using she, her pronouns. Uh, you can find me all over the place doing a whole sorts of, all sorts of things under that name. Um, I'll be playing Tana Graceland Glimpspark, the, one of the party's wizards. Uh, and uh, she, she, too, has a very cozy home life that she likes to go back to. She's currently here searching for recipes for her mother. Wonderful. Also so wholesome. Um, great. Uh, Beth, you want to go ahead and go next? Your rainbow hair? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Beth with an E. I use they, them pronouns. You can find me every once in a while when uh, the, the moon and stars align at Indigo Chameleon, where I play a rogue pirate. Very, very different from today's character, which <laughs> is a hippie centaur peace cleric named P. Send love. Uh, she, they, any, all, all of the pronouns um, don't define ourselves by any particular means. Uh, never here to be the centaur of attention, just trying to find peace and wander and uh, make friends and bring calm to all who uh, surround me. I love that so much. That never gets old for me. Uh, <laughs> at least, Theta, what are you up to, buddy? <laughs> Hi, Theta, they, them pronouns. Uh, you can find me at Bing Su Jung on Twitter, where I do things. I mostly just play TTRPGs, write things for TTRPGs, and talk about physics, because I love physics. Uh, and I am playing Adara, they, Fay. Uh, Adara is the other wizard of this party and uh, does not like leaving their home. Unfortunately, they have left their home and they're not the most pleased about this. Well, you know what? That's just fine. Um, and I'm very glad that you're here and that your character's here. Um, okay, perfect. Well, without further ado, um, I will say, uh, as for Girls Run These Worlds, real quick, we're currently running games uh, almost daily during the week with our next show being the Throsian Odyssey Strands of Fate game here on Sunday. Uh, so, yeah, Sunday. Sunday mornings. I forgot what day of the week it was. Uh, thank you for genuinely supporting every femme dm on this channel and their wonderful cast of players um we really appreciate you guys in chat um just keep up the good 
work. I guess it's not work if you enjoy being here. So I hope you all enjoy being here. Um, I hope everybody who attended Gen Con last week is COVID free and had a great time rolling with friends. I'll just throw that out there because we were not here last week. Um, and because of that, I have a very brief and mostly accurate recap for you all real quick. Uh, when we last left our party, Shim Shime's rhyme was in full effect. A Kenku's secret kept close, a child's last stand, and an ending no one expected. Turns out shadowy shapes and giant tables of stone don't mix, especially when bent to the will of the shoulders of a very determined gnome and her resident stepstool. Cleric rangers are truly the Swiss army knives of D&D, aren't they? <laughs> And with that, the party defeated Shemshime with absolutely no skin off their backs. They did a really great job. Uh, and long story short, we have now escaped the Firefly Cellar. And our party of five is now headed back to hopefully the safety of the library. We'll see how things turned out there with Gertrude. Um, and you guys see, as you're traveling across the plaza, as you're let out of the Firefly Cellar one by one, um, the door that you guys left out of the side of the library is not there anymore. You guys didn't, you know, I assume you probably didn't look back as you were running for your lives out of the building before, but it is just a brick wall. So you guys have a couple choices. You can either look for the back door or you know where the front door is. <laughs> so it's up to you guys. Are we headed to the front? Yeah, I mean, we don't have anything to hide, right? No. <laughs> just walk back in. <laughs> Great. Um, just checking to see if there's a mutiny against me, the DM, or something, and you guys are hiding something. I mean, I, I wouldn't know. Uh, perfect. So you guys go back to the front door of the library, um, and the door is locked. Oh. Uh, can I try knocking? Yes, absolutely. You can try knocking a door. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, I just knock, I guess. Okay, are you like saying anything while you're knocking? Or are you just... Hello, is anybody there? Oh, okay. Are you loud? Are you like loudly knocking? Or are you just um... kind of doing a little... I figure a door is putting some force into it because this is a giant set of wooden doors. But I figure she's not like they're not screaming. Look at me. Uh, they're not screaming or anything as they knock. Okay. Um, you knock, and surprisingly, nobody answers. Uh, oh. Oh. Um. I was reading in my notes earlier, and um. I can probably teleport to the other side. To the other side, I haven't tried it before, but I, in theory, I can, um, and I can take someone with me if they want to go. Oh, maybe take somebody who uh, is good at opening doors, like. All right. I'm... Who's the best door opener? I imagine they would be. Ooh, ooh. Me, 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 Tana, take me, take me. Okay, okay. Uh, please keep all hands, feet, and objects inside the spell circle at all times. Uh, I am not liable for any motion sickness, teleportation sickness, or uh, any damaged items. Okay, here we go. Uh, and Tana will uh, visualize the entryway on the other side of the door from when we came in and cast Dimension Door to take both uh both of us through excellent um okay tana you envision the inside of the library having been in there long enough looking for recipes for your mom you know the inside very well even just for being in there for a mere few hours um and you guys pop in on the other side there are no candles lit that you guys saw before when you were in there the first time it is not pitch black in here there is some natural light coming through the windows but from what you can see, it is bare bones in here. There's not a soul in sight. Well, that ain't know? good. I don't know. Do you have all your limbs? Yeah. Okay, good. It worked. Uh, I guess we try the door and then we try to find everybody else. 
I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I will say this for you, JJ. Uh, Triple notices it is just locked from the outside. There's not, like, it's not barred up or anything from the inside. So you pretty much just have to push it open. Okay. There's a latch. I'll give I'll you a latch um, that you have to do. So <laughs> if a small piece of metal warrants a strength check from you, that's up to you, buddy. Um, but it's just a little, like, <laughs> one of those. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to unlatch the door and just be like, Tana, help me pull <laughs> since we're so little. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Great. I would like to say it's now canon that the Candle Cube Library has two sets of handles on the inside. One that's like probably like two and a half, three feet. And then a second one that's closer to normal height. Anybody towards the top could probably just use their full body to push this sucker open. But between the two of you guys, you can use both sets of handles on this door. Wonderful. Okay. Um, just to add insult to injury, there's a tiny door on the bottom that looks like it might also be locked. Um, but you don't have there. There is a special key for that one. Um, okay. So you guys open the door. Is everybody else walking inside, I'm assuming? Okay, perfect. Same yep. situation for you guys. Um, opening the door, if you guys want to prop it open, that's up to you. There is enough natural light in here. Anybody with dark vision doesn't need to use it. I um, Oh, go ahead, Dana. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, like, I think I'd probably, like, pick up a rock or something and not, like, try to prop open the door, but, like, put it kind of in between the doors to make sure that when the door closes, it's not going to then again lock or something. Like, just keep it a little open. Okay. That's absolutely fair. Um, does anybody want to give me a perception check? First roll of the night, baby. Here we go. Hopefully this, this session I can roll above a seven. I think that was Hopefully. the highest that I rolled last time. Yeah, I hope oh, you put cool. that nice in jail. 25. 25 for Soren. Okay, Soren, you notice if you look <laughs> over at the librarian's desk, there is a piping hot cup of tea. Um, it, it, Somebody's here, and I'm going to point it out and then look around. Is there anybody like on the floor behind the desk or something? Um, if you're looking behind the desk, there is a small latch in the floor. It looks like it's a trap door of some kind, but it, there is a lock on it. Um, are you just looking behind the desk or are you looking anywhere else in the library? Um, for right now, I'd go, sort of go directly to the desk and, and look around if that's where the, the coffee or the tea mug is. Um, is this Gertrude's desk or is this? It is. Oh, Y'all, something's something's wrong because Gertrude's not not here. Um, Why is her tea still out then? Right. Is it warm? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's warm. It's it's. I'm gonna take a sip of it. Does it taste normal? <laughs> what? Why you, why else's tea? So it takes a small sip of the piping hot hot tea <laughs> that's sitting up. Gertrude's desk. Uh, Soaring, I'm not gonna lie, Gertrude likes her tea, like, spicy. Give me a con save. Well, I, this, you can see the steam coming off um, and the little glass jars that Gertrude has on her desk that say, like, world's best boss and that kind of stuff have, like, condensation on the, on the glass. Like, it is hot. Eight. And eight, <laughs> you take two points. On the punk. <laughs> It's really hot. Fire it's damage. Really hot. Um, yeah, as your tongue feels not so great for a second, buddy. Does anybody else want to do anything with hearing this new information from Sori? Nobody else wants to drink the mystery tea? Come on now. No, no, I, thank you. I don't drink other people's tea. Yeah. Are there some I cookies up there? You know, there is a plate, but no cookies. Uh, oh. Sorry, I realized it was mint tea that you had. So you had a weird sensation of like 
the cooling sensation of mint tea, but like the heat of the fact that, that it was too Especially hot. how Mary likes her tea. So the mint with really? the hot. Yeah, because that's how I like it. So that's how she likes it. Two points uh, of damage well spent. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, it's very hot. That's very good. I mean, like. Um, uh, does anyone know where the kitchens might be? Maybe she's baking more cookies. That's true. Um, it could, maybe we could check out the trap door. I mean, that's locked though. I wonder how you could lock it from the inside, lock a lock on the outside from the inside, but, uh. RK9 oh, yeah. plus Mage Hand. That's one. Uh, or was that rhetorical? Well, no, Mage Hand, I don't know if you can cast Mage Hand through objects. I forget about that. I don't think you can. I think you have I to do. guide the Mage Hand. I can't, but if you mark an eye up, then technically you can oh, see because true. you can, yeah, it can go around. Unseen things. servant. Oh, unseen servant. Oh, oh, could you cast it through a familiar? You can cast unseen servant in places you can't see it. That's All true. right. So while y'all go on about the <laughs> theoretical <laughs> state of magic, um, let's find that kitchen. I don't think it's going to be locked up. It's probably going to be somewhere where more than just Gertrude could have access to it. Maybe there's a map somewhere that we can follow. <laughs> we go through her desk. <laughs> that would yes. make sense. This is kind of a museum. I'm Was just going to open. Was there a here board when we desk. came in? Oh, wait. There, I you know what? Uh, somebody else either. <laughs> uh, Hype Goblin, if you want to go ahead and give me a uh, perception check from, from uh, Adara, or from Tana. Wow. Sorry, Thana. Um, somebody give me a perception check. I'm already messing up names tonight. This is great. Um, an 11. An 11. Um, you do remember seeing, not a you are here sign, but um, on every end of every bookshelf, there's kind of like an evacuation plan sheet. Um, and you guys see there's nothing behind her desk uh, at least from what you guys can see. So you that doesn't give you any insight into the trap door. Um, but if you guys are looking, there's like a, on the opposite side of the library from where the kids corner is on the other side, closer to where Tana was looking at all the recipes. There's a small like kitchen nook. Um, you can definitely tell it's, it has, you know, it needs magic to work. It doesn't look super functional right now. Um, but there's like, a hot plate and some cups um and there's some tea bags that haven't been steeped yet in a small container but mm -hmm. other than that there's really not a whole lot of baking stuff that you guys can see is there a garbage can over there <laughs> is there a garbage can yeah there's a small waste basket underneath with some like uh ripped open tea bags and tea leaves that are still uh visible and recognizable in there yeah, I want to. I want to see if the warm tea, <laughs> the tea bag from the tea is in the garbage. The tea bag from the tea is still in the cup. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. oh. Oh, that's gonna steep too long. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wait, have we tried picking the lock on the door? Oh wait, we haven't tried knocking on it either. Can I knock on that one as well? Just gonna knock on doors. You're gonna knock on the trap door. I'm polite. I'm polite. I knock on doors before I try breaking them open. Adara is politely knocking on the potential underground apartment in the Candlekeep Mysteries yes. library. Great. Um, with somebody powerful enough to <laughs> to log in from the outside with a padlock. Great. Um, there is no answer, but it sounds kind of. Not hollow, but there's an echo when you knock. Oh, I wonder how deep it goes. Does somebody want to try to pick it? I'm not particularly good at picking locks. It's not needed. Um, it sounds like we need some trouble, uh, which is on <laughs> AFK right now. True. I could just magic missile lock until it's broken. <laughs> oh, but that would break the lock. That's so rude. For I mean, what it's worth. Tana does look like a pretty basic lock. JJ, do you want to pick a lock? 
<laughs> Hello, trouble is back and ready to pick locks. <laughs> That's a yes. Um, perfect. Trouble, I'm assuming, as always, you have uh, a kit for this, right? So, um, yes. go ahead, give me like a sleight of hand check. Okay. With advantage. All right. <clears throat> it is a 14. A 14. Surprisingly, the lock pops open with no problem trouble. Um, do you take it off? Yes. Okay. Um, and are you trying to open the door? Yes. I'm going to say, before I open it, I'm going to say, okay, everybody, wait. Step back. And then I'm gonna yank it. The drama. Uh, Real. <laughs> trouble. As you open this trap door, underneath you see a surprisingly large collection of lost and found. This is where all of the lost and found things that come to the library or are left in the library end up. Um, and there are no books under there, you'll notice, because they all end up in the library's collection if they're ones that haven't already been um cataloged yet but there are like stuffed animals from small children there's a couple of popsicle sticks laying on the bottom that have just kind of been thrown down there just from looking at it you are not sure if the person really understood what lost and found meant or if they just didn't know where the trash can was oh if you would okay. like to poke around further you can but it's pretty dark down there and there's no um i'll say the outside light is enough to light up the room but not deep enough to surpass both the desk and end up in the trap door. Okay. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of stuff down here. Um, some of it's good and some of it's uh, questionable. I don't know if Gertrude and I'm going to cut my hands. Miss Gertrude! And just yell at the top of my legs. Are you down there? You're yelling into the trap door? Yes. Um, okay. Give me, you know what? We're going to see how loud you are. Give me a performance check real quick. I'm curious. Does the rogue have high charisma? Can anybody help? Can we, can we help? You can, you can help if more than one of you wants to go over and mutually yell into the void. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Don't well, I am always down to time. mutually yell in the void with my friend. <laughs> is it a charisma check? It's a charisma, so performance, okay. whatever your modifier is. Yep. Where's my charisma? It's a nine. A nine? Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Did you roll with advantage because you're being helped by Sorry? Oh, okay. How do I roll with advantage? What does that just, mean? Just roll again and take. Just roll again. Mm -hmm. Okay. That one's a ten. <laughs> Nine out of ten. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're pretty darn loud. Anybody that's over next to the desk, you feel uh, the ground doesn't rumble from the sound of Trouble's voice, but there are some like cups that people left left behind like their mugs uh, that people bring in to go ahead and sample the um there are some drinks over in like the tea area uh that gertrude keeps a handle on the mugs kind of clatter on the ground inside and you guys feel the clattering of the mugs so i feel like if you would have gotten a little bit higher something might have happened that was more than I was expecting uh, after looking at your charisma. Okay, great, perfect. Um, if you want to look around, you can. Otherwise, uh, nothing happens with a 10, unfortunately. If anybody, um, let's see, what can I have you do? Um, if anybody else wants to roll, like, just for funsies to go, like, looking for Gertrude, I'll give you, you can do, like, an investigation check. I'll count that. Oh, okay. I'm good at those. Yeah. Anybody wants to look for clues. I definitely am looking for Gertrude. 17 from Tana. 
peak out of 10. Peak out of 10. <laughs> 14. Okay. Uh, Soren would, would go about it a little bit differently because of the, the ranger stuff. So would be looking for any sort of tracks or or like where does Gertrude go like trying to track her like prey? Could I use survival? I will definitely allow it. Yeah, sure. I like that. I have a 13, 13. for investigation. Perfect. Okay, I got a 20. A 20? Okay, so Soaring and Tana, you guys notice two different things with your roles. Um, I will say, let's do this. So with a 17 from Tana, you notice uh, there are definitely drops of water on the ground coming from the small area where Gertrude made the tea in that small hutch in the corner. But the drops of water appear to have fresh footprints in them that lead back further into the library, headed back towards the restricted section. At least as far as you know, that's what's back there. Um, and soaring, you notice the air feels kind of stale in here. Like after everybody was rushed out of the library, nothing has really happened since. Like there has not been a single soul in here to kick up dust in the amount of time that you guys were in the Firefly Cellar. Um, but you feel like this might have been magically altered in some way with, with, with a, a natural 20, I'll give you that. Um, and you can see, what is your vision? Do you have like dark vision? Uh, yeah, because I just I just got that changed mm -hmm. actually. Um, eyes of the night. I have dark vision out to a range of three hundred, and I can share that dark vision with the rest of the party for an hour if we need it. So yeah, three hundred. Okay. I thought I thought I saw that on your sheet. Excellent. Okay, you notice uh, with one step further from what I gave Tana, the restricted section door towards the end of the library is cracked ajar and there's a light coming from it. Oh, y'all look over there. And then I'm going to give, if everybody's okay with it, everybody can now see 300 feet out. <laughs> so that, um, but yeah, so that, and that lasts for an hour. So that should be good for investigate. But yeah, I'll point that out to the, the party and start headed over there. Oh, uh, someone Whoa, tracked water off that way too. Him. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, why would they spill water though? Like, maybe that she was chasing somebody who had a jug of water <laughs> and went into the restricted. Are they spilled it while somebody making their tea? Mm. Sorry, JJ, what was that? I said maybe somebody went swimming and then they came inside and Miss Gertrude was really upset with them. <gasps> that could be, that could be. Gertrude upset with somebody? JJ, how dare you? Uh, <laughs> okay. She didn't want the books to get wet. Mm, perfect. Uh, this is just one set of footprints from what you guys can tell. Um, is everybody heading back towards the restricted section? Okay, perfect. Uh, so you guys get relatively close to the door and you hear a lot of commotion coming from back here. Nobody has necessarily been close enough uh, to hear it. And the library is surprisingly humming when everybody's in there reading. Um, there's a very like magical energy from the patrons of the library. So without the hum of the patronage of those in the library on a normal basis, you guys can clearly hear from the bottom of the steps to the restricted section that there is the flipping of pages. There are people talking. Um, and you do hear Gertrude, not barking orders, um, but definitely leading the fray. Well, found her. Can we try and listen, I guess, almost for um, what's being said more specifically? Yeah, sure. Um, go ahead. 
I'll say you guys would probably, in order to be able to listen clearly, would have to open the door a little bit. So if you want to give me a sleight of hand, if you're trying to do this uh, stealthily, give me like a stealth check for opening the door without it creaking. Mm -hmm. I'll do a stealth check. (laughs) (laughs) Can I help you and give you advantage? Like, can I help? Sure, I have also two candles on this door. If one of you, I have, I have slide a hand like it's super high, so you're good. I got twenty. A twenty for trouble. Yeah, trouble. You are easily able to. I wanted to make my creaking door noise, but I can't because you opened it noiselessly. Great. Um, okay. Yeah. Trouble. You open the door, like probably it's like five or six inches at this point, And you guys can clearly hear Gertrude at the bottom of the steps. Okay, everybody. It's time for a little bit of a break. Everybody's been working super hard. I did make some muffins earlier, but I did. I did anybody see my tea? I think I might have left it upstairs. Give me just one second. Uh, Ginny, if you want to go ahead and pass around the cookies for me, uh, that would be swell. I'll be right back. Um, and you guys have about 30 seconds before Gertrude is at the top of the stairs, if you don't want her to know that you were listening. Everybody act natural. <laughs> is everybody just like leaning on a bookshelf? <laughs> Hannah, are you just, are you I'll, I'll pull out a book. I'll pull out a book? In the, great. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, we got Adara holding a book. <laughs> Soaring and treble, casually leaning. I'm I'm picturing you guys on either side of the walkway, just staring yeah. at the restricted section door. Uh, Tana, where are you in respective to this? Uh, probably just gonna slide into one of the aisles and just peek around the corner. Great, we've got Tana head only um, to be seen by the door. P, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, P panics and grabs one of the nearest books and opens it, but isn't even looking at it, is just staring straight through it because they have a terrible poker face and they really don't like lying. So they don't even want to be asked anything. They just really want to look busy enough to avoid it all together. Great. Wonderful. Uh, You guys see as Gertrude is skipping happily up the stairs um, and she makes the door creak open a little bit and she exclaims, Oh, um, who let you guys in? We did. We let ourselves in. Yeah, we finished the job. I helped. Perfect. You guys see, Gertrude doesn't look confused that you're in here. She's surprised that nobody is with you. Um, kind of looking around. So, Crinkle didn't happen to follow you guys here or anything, right? Like, you guys didn't notice a spare Kenku? No. Okay. Uh, just, you know, because after what happened with Shem Shimes, I'm just trying to keep track of all of my books a little extra close. Uh, and she looks at the couple of you that have a book, and she kind of, like, winces a little bit. Um, not to say it's a sore subject, but considering the last book that was taken... Uh, ended up kind of being the downfall of the library for a day, which really hurts me as the librarian. Um, they've threatened a few of my vacation days, and I'm not sure, you know, how I'm going to go to one of my friend's weddings. But that, that's besides the point. Um, security is at an all-time high here, but I have cookies downstairs, you know, and those fix quite a lot. So if you guys want to head down, I'm going to go ahead and go grab my tea off of my desk. Um, and I will meet you guys down there, okay? And she kind of slips past you guys um, and heads off to her desk. Are you guys heading downstairs? Are you doing anything else? Are you discussing as a group? Uh, I will say that P got really excited at the sound of cookies. (laughs) And so is like (laughs) pretending to wait to get the group decision, but is definitely staring ahead like, oh my God. I would like to see if by any chance, like, I guess this would be kind of reaching back in memory at this point, but if there was anyone maybe following us, kind of, you know, in a cloak, Mm -hmm. kanku size that we just didn't make a perception check for. (laughs) Um, You know what? I will give Adara a history 
perception check. So whatever is higher for you, go ahead and give me either history or perception. Okay. Um, weirdly enough, it's perception because I didn't take anything in history. Fair. Uh, that is going to be 23. A 23. Um, perception. You know, yeah, you know what? Adara, here, here's what you remember. You guys left the Firefly Cellar, and you remember the Kenku going back to the kitchen. Um, probably after coming to from being hit over the head with a book, um, she's not really in the best shape to go book stealing. Um, and you don't remember seeing her leave the Firefly Cellar. Okay, that's good. Godot would just breathe a sigh of relief, like, oh, thank God. No, <laughs> no library cards are going to be taken, hopefully, today. Mm -hmm. Great. Perfect. Soaring, did you want to retroactively say that you warned Gertrude about the sip of tea that you took? Or are we just not... Cool. Nope. <laughs> not gonna mention it. <gasps> cool. Cool. Uh, <laughs> great. Uh, wonderful. Is everybody heading down the steps? Great. You have been invited. You're not breaking any rules. Um, as you go down, there's about 30 steps or so. And immediately once entering the basement, it smells like cookies down here. Oh. Um, and there are lights on. It smells like a good time. Like all of the fresh books are down here in the restricted section. You guys can tell this is where a lot of the cataloging happens. So I imagine this like um, the vault in Harry Potter with all of the goblins um but like instead these are goblins that are cataloging books and binding pages and it smells a little bit like glue down here but it's a good glue smell uh nobody's gonna pass out from exposure um so as you guys look around you do see that the goblin in question uh, that Gertrude referred to as Ginny is passing out cookies. And she turns around after hearing people come down the steps and she'll turn to you guys and go, Oh, hello, nice, nice to meet you, I, I'm Ginny. How is everybody doing? Would, would you like a refreshment? And, and she holds out uh, the plate of cookies and she also has a small tray of like decorative lemonades, you think? Oh, well, aren't you a tall glass of water? Yeah, I'm gonna get me a lemonade. Okay. He politely but eagerly walks forward and says, yes, please, it looks wonderful. P, Ginny is shorter than, uh, than Galeby, the child that you encountered two set, yeah, last session. So you have to like really get down to her level. I'll say as a centaur, you are a, you are tall, like even getting down the steps. How did you get down the steps? Was it like a sideways kind of a situation? Like, anyway, that's <laughs> besides the point. I just needed that mental image that makes me happy. Uh, she holds up as high as she can go on her tiptoes. Um, surprisingly, Tana, she's about your height. Um, and she looks thrilled to be here. She is in a small dragon costume. Um, and she's just, she's having a blast. Uh, you guys can tell though, she's not a child. She is actually pretty middle-aged looking. Uh, a little bit too old maybe to be in the dragon costume that she's in and holding out refreshments. But she does have an intern badge on. Um, and ironically, it says property of Gertrude on it. Um, and property has been crossed out and pleasantry written um, underneath it. So she's just all smiles from ear to goblin ear as she's handing out refreshments. Is anybody else taking one other than P? And I'll take some. Perfect. Okay. Uh, those of you who take a sip, um, you get the effects of a long rest. If you would like to share that with any of your friends, um, you can absolutely do so. This this is this is absolutely fantastic. Everybody needs to have some of this. Just a little oh, little dabble do it. So good. Okay. I think it all will just be like take a small sip. Perfect. I like the lemon I, I like the watermelon edition. 
yeah, anybody who tries this lemonade, it is the best tasting lemonade you've ever had based off of your personality. So Adara, if you taste watermelon, that is totally on brand for you. Uh, sweetness and light and good with, with <laughs> a good hearty watermelon. Uh, you're strong in your magic. Great. Uh, not me doing tarot readings with food. Uh, great. Okay. <laughs> Mine else? tastes like mint and julep. <laughs> <laughs> Do you drink anything without mint in it by chance, Soren? Or is that like... No, Soren, Soren um, mint is so light and refreshing. It reminds her of home. Mm. So every Wonderful. time Soren takes a sip of water, even if it's plain water, it suddenly becomes mint water. I wish. <laughs> That would be a cool feat. <laughs> but she probably just crushes mint up and like has like a little thing of mint to put in everything. But you you have mint in your spell component pass pouch, but you don't use it for spells. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, well, as you guys are down here, uh, Jenny will put down the now empty trays now that you guys have partaken and have your effects of a long rest refl uh, replenish your HP and spell slots, please. Um, so, is everybody okay? Because, like, as far as I know, things were really bad yesterday, and all of us in the basement just all of a sudden had a lot of extra friends um, all at once. The people who didn't want to leave the library who are here on, like, work visas um, that couldn't leave. I mean, they were allowed to leave after a little while, but um, hence, you know, we're passing out some healing capabilities today. So just checking in. Um, and she looks really nervous for you guys, um, kind of staring at your brows, um, implying that she knows that you all had a voice in your head. Oh, well, uh, that unpleasantness is, has, has come to pass. It's, oh, it's taken care of. Yes, we've gotten it all taken care of. But the real question here is, where did you get that badge? And more importantly, where can I get one? <laughs> Um, so this is actually a recycled back of the book uh, that we have, like the book binding that we make, and she'll hold up um, one of the book bindings that's being used to repair a book downstairs, and it says property of like the Candlekeep Library, and she has spliced together um, property of and like a blank part of the book, and you can see there's like in the trash next to the steps. Um, the rest of the binding that she probably wasn't supposed to just pitch, but the leather is just in the trash can with two small circles cut out of it. And if you look closely at her badge, it's just leather, like, what's the D&D &D version of taped? Well, I mean, they're in, they're literally binding books with glue, Sarah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm fine today, everybody, I swear. Um, yeah, it, it's spliced together and you can see she's not too great with like a um you know the guns that they use with like the metal points to like sear things into leather and wood that's what she's mm -hmm. used to cross it out and it's very shaky just looking at her she looks like she's had four D D red bulls um she's just quivering uh okay yeah so i kind of made it if you would like one i'm more than happy to make you one um but unfortunately uh, the last time Gertrude had two down here, um, the leather that I already commandeered has been um, ruined. So if you have your own book that I could make, you know, I can't do leathers though, so you have to do your, your, like your own leathers. Ah, uh, but I could make like the back of it if you if you want it. You know, I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can get together, and then we'll talk more about this in depth. We might even start a fan club. Of Gertrude? Yes. She's, she looks like she's gotten the best news of her entire life. Um, and she runs and her cape kind of like drags on the floor uh, along with her dragon tail as she runs away. She hasn't been fitted for it yet. It's a couple feet too long. Um, and as you guys look around, there are just books everywhere. There are books that are ready to be cataloged, like taken upstairs. There's a, um, like a levy, uh, sorry, a 
like a lever pulley situation where you put the books and they can be easily transported upstairs without having to be carried. Um, and the other thing that you guys noticed down here, it is surprisingly like bustling. After everything that happened in the library yesterday, it seems fine down here. Like you're honestly surprised that you can't hear how much commotion is happening down here from upstairs. Um, and Ginny comes back and she has a couple of books that have seen better days and she'll hand them to you, Treble. Um, if you want to go ahead and like cut a couple of these, I won't tell Lulu. Um, and okay. That sounds good. Oh boy. Hold that on. sounds like that could be dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I just realized that Beth can't hear me again. Um, interesting, considering how much lore we lost last time. Um, I know this is like really early, but just because this lasted for like 40 minutes last time, is everybody cool with doing our 10 minute break now? Let's do is it. Is that okay? It's yeah. been almost an hour. Okay. Yeah. So sorry, everyone. I just want to need... feel included in the game that I invited them to. Um, yeah. Wonderful. They yeah. need to be part of it. I feel yeah. so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I caught it uh, within two minutes this time. Great. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes, everybody. Uh, go recharge, collect a spoon, grab a drink, uh, go to the restroom. We'll see you in about 10 minutes.
Welcome back to Candlekeep Mysteries, Chats and Cats. Uh, sorry about the little technical disruption there. Everybody is back. Everybody is well. Everybody has at least one spoon to spare for me this evening again. Uh, I just wanted to say where we left off. Everybody has now entered the basement of the library, which is like the collections um, restricted section of the library, uh, so to speak. So everybody has just had the effects of a long rest with some lemonade and cookies, and we have all met Gertrude's young, uh, seemingly young, mostly middle-aged intern named Jenny, who is a small, <laughs> a small goblin uh, with big dreams and a dragon costume. So uh, with that, Gertrude is coming down the steps to see all of you guys again. Uh, and she exclaims on seeing that you've all met Jenny, Oh, excellent. I was hoping you all would meet. Um, also, does anybody happen to have a spare uh, tea bag with mint in it? Because my tea got cold. I left it upstairs just a little bit too long. Uh, if not, that's okay. I should have been more prepared. I mean, I, I do. I'll trade you. I'll take the cold and drop a little bit of bourbon in there. It'll be just fine. <laughs> I do have a candle. A, can a single candle. <laughs> yes. You know, take have. a candle. <laughs> I can cast a, a fire spell. I can cast Ooh. a cooling spell. Cool. Like iced tea? Iced tea. Ooh. You know what, buddies? Uh, if you guys want to, like, rock, paper, scissors for it, I mean... <laughs> I'm not really in a position to choose for myself right now. And I think that would be darn fun if I ended up with iced tea, but I want the fates to decide, you know? So if the two of you guys just, if both of you, this is me as Mo, want to roll a d20 and whoever gets higher, that's what the tea becomes. Uh <laughs> I will definitely hand it over because my spell is an attack spell. I mean, mine is flaming sphere. So. <laughs> yeah, mine is uh, mine's binding ice. These are both flavored attacks that you were offering. I, I love how the most I didn't chaotic say they were characters. good ideas. Like, I literally love how the most chaotic character is the one who has the safest option right now. <laughs> like, right? Like, oh, he's a candle. I'm like, <laughs> It'll take a minute, but. It's safe and there's no range on it. Um, <laughs> they're surrounded by all of these currently in construction books. Um, I mean, if you do you want to hand it to Tana Adara, is that what you're saying? <laughs> Tana, uh, you can, can, can we not burn the library down though? Like, can we not? Oh, that's right. That's a bad thing. You wouldn't never mind. Well, you wouldn't be able be to, to get, do this. Yeah, all those recipes that you need for your mother would just uh -huh. be gone. I, my, mine will mean that people have to check to see if they get uh, bound by ice. So, um, why don't we yeah. just do the candle? <laughs> yeah, my <laughs> daughter's just like uh, here and hands it off to Devil. Yeah. Uh, Gertrude will hold her cup out for a very long time, uh, just talking to you guys as Treble, if you would be so kind as to hold the candle underneath this mug. Um, and after about 12 minutes or so, Gertrude takes a sip and goes, ooh, lukewarm, just how I like it. Um, <laughs> And she'll put down the cup and kind of like wince a little bit, not necessarily because of the lukewarmth of it, but because it was definitely steeping way too long, like Sora and implied it might. Um, great. So Gertrude looks at you all a little bit guiltily. Um, so listen, everybody, you know, welcome to Candlekeep uh, for the second time. Hopefully this time will go a little bit smoother than the first. Unfortunately, I have two requests. Um, so everybody makes mistakes sometimes. Sometimes we let things kind of be swept under the rug, as some folks happen to say. Um, when I was young 
and she looks at all of you like she knows that you all had the vision of her as a young about at the front gates taking books from folks who were just entering candle keep when i was young uh when i was just a junior member uh, i was never an intern sorry jenny we didn't really have those when i was <laughs> your age bless you uh and jenny just nods like this doesn't phase her at all she can't be offended um so <sighs> Unfortunately, I kind of pulled a crinkle and I found a book, brought it to the library because I just sensed that there was something wrong with it. Uh, and it kind of took this event happening for me to realize that sometimes it's not necessarily bad people that are stuck in books. You know, sometimes folks that can genuinely do some good are stuck in books on occasion. And unfortunately, I kind of forgot about him so if you all wouldn't mind for just one quick moment excuse me uh and gertrude will turn around go to like a small desk in the back rummage around and she'll pull out a very very thick blue book with um tomes written on the front and run it over to everybody so i donated this to candle keep and it never really got cataloged so to speak so I'm kind of doing backlog work since we don't have anybody upstairs and my works aren't needed. They're needed down here at the moment. And there's somebody trapped in here, but unfortunately, I'm not trying to call anybody out, but is there any one of you that just so happens uh, to be just steely enough like Crinkle that you would maybe consider taking a book out of the library? Like if that's in your nature, I could really use that character trait because I unfortunately don't have a bad bone in my body, but sometimes I sure wish I did, you know? And she's kind of looking like she knows this is a weird request to ask somebody to call themselves out, but it's necessary. Sorry, you raised a single finger. Oh yeah, no, because on on the screen, who above me? <laughs> it's oh, JJ. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like calling yourself no. out. No, sure. No, like, <laughs> look at <I'm> like, <laughs> Be like, well, Miss Gertrude, this sounds like you need a little bit of treble in your life. Mm. How may I assist? So I just need you to hold it, and I don't want you to be scared when it pops open. I figured out how to open this years ago, but unfortunately everybody who works here is good. And Crinkle's been indisposed for years on the restoration project. So I just thought maybe, and she'll hand it in your direction. Do you take it? Are you hesitant to take it based off of what she said? I don't even hesitate. I just completely like, thanks. Hmm. Great. Um, yeah, so the book instantly pops open in your hands as a person who might be inclined to steal something from the library trouble uh that unique characteristic of your um of your pc makes you uniquely qualified to open a book in which that's kind of the only way it can be opened uh and gertrude doesn't know how to explain that and i'm doing a bad job as well. So we're gonna move past that. Um, but it is a very heavy blue tome and it is bound in like a white marble leather material. Um, you have no idea what animal this could possibly have been made out of. Whatever it is, it's definitely extinct. Um, and there was a large padlock on the side preventing it to be open and the padlock falls to the floor as it bursts open. And you see it's about 200 pages. Um, the first few contain nothing. Are you going to, I mean, when I say it's open, the front part is open and then all of the pages, there's no like cover page or anything. Are you gonna flip through it at all? Perfect. Okay, great. As you start to flip through it, there is a white mist that begins to circle your feet, Preble. As you feel a cold, but like the kind of cold that you feel on the ocean when you're sitting on the sand and the breeze comes in from the tide, it's a pleasant cold. And all of the sudden you feel the urge to sneeze something fierce. Uh, 
I will say you do, as long as you're okay with me taking away your agency. Perfect. You sneeze, and out from your nose <laughs> uh, is a large puff of steam as um, what looks like an air genasi, but anybody who wants to give me a perception check can. Perfect. I think I should get like a vantage on that because that would be my people. Sure. I will give you advantage on that, Soren. Go ahead. <laughs> like P got oh, 20. Got... Wow. Not 20. 27. What? <laughs> Tana got a 10. Oh. No. <laughs> Treble, are you trying or are you just in charge of holding the book open right now? After sneezing out, whatever this thing is. Uh, you know what? I'll just say that you know everybody but Tana recognizes this to be a gin that has just emerged out of the book and out of the nostrils of your rogue. And he kind of, he is materialized, but he's the kind of materialized like from the, like the gin in Aladdin where like he doesn't really have legs. He just has like a misty tail. And he is gorgeous. This is a beautiful man. Uh, he has like golden skin and blue gold ringlets around like from his wrists to his elbows on either arm. He has a blue circlet around his forehead and a blue nose ring um, and blue snake bite lip rings. And you see as he looks at all of you guys and looks at Gertrude and goes, well, it's about time. You let me free. I've only been whispering in your little ear for years, lady. And he looks at everybody and he goes, Mighty nice to make your acquaintance, miss. And he'll hold out, hold out his hand to you, Trouble. Hot. I mean, you're hot. I don't know. My name's Trouble. Hi. <laughs> All right. I mean, Trouble is hot, so... I, I couldn't help but agree. Um, why exactly were you able to open my book? I know Gertrude here is too lighthearted for such a task, but it means a lot to meet somebody with some uh, some courage, some gusto, as one would say. Sorry, this man is fully Matthew McConaughey in genie form. Just yes. so everybody, just so everybody knows, that's what's in my head. Uh. Carrying on. 90s Matthew McConaughey? Like, are we talking <laughs> early 2000s, late 90s? Sure, sure is. Okay. Yep. Uh, great. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, he will look at Gertrude and kind of gesture for her to, like, take a side with him. And you see he whispers in her ear for a second. And she's furiously nodding her cheeks are as red as the book bindings uh, and the yes. like finished stamps that people are putting in the back of these books, the ink. And she looks at all of you and she goes, okay, uh, <clears throat> well, you guys are in darn good hands. I will go ahead um, and let him tell you a little bit about himself. Uh, can you just introduce yourself, please? You know, that, that might be a good idea. And he smirks looks at Gertrude, then looks back to the party. Oh, yeah, so, sorry. I um, I probably should give you a name to call me by. I wanted to make a, I wanted to make a joke. I won't. Uh, my name's Gazare. Uh, Gazare Zam. Kind of like rhymes with Alakazam. That's not really my vibe. So you can just call me Jeannie or Gaz if you like. I kind of answer to anything um including daddy if that's what you're into but you know that's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> i i oh, uh, dude, like, yeah. <laughs> so listen here here's what's going on um gertrude won't tell you this but there's some other stuff going on i just kind of got the got the rundown from her real quick She's too nice to ask after what y'all have been through. Um, but I've been trapped here for a little too long. This is very contained rage that y'all are witnessing. 
at this moment in time. Um, the person who trapped me kind of lives in a cave, and I kind of would love for y'all to go to that cave. But here's the problem with that there cave. Uh, Gertrude has informed me that there are three wyverns around that there cave, uh, and you're not going to be able to get in until they're um, wyvern not anymore, if that makes sense. So I will just warn you that if you'd like to help me, that's step one. And once we get to the cave, I'll be more than happy to let y'all know what's going on with me a little more, but I'm going to need a little bit of trust from y'all if that's okay. Not really sure how good y'all are at, you know, trusting folks, but the way y'all just kind of disappeared into the Firefly Cellar without a second thought, I think, you know, perhaps this is the group for me, you know, and he'll, <laughs> he'll wink at you, Sorn. Um, <clears throat> that doesn't have any effect on Soren, unfortunately, I, for him, <laughs> but... Uh, she's just gonna like. Does Does Soren recognize him? Like, okay, all right. Well, I I mean, I'll help you out because you're kinfolk, but uh, I don't I don't know about trusting anybody. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll give you this. I promise. I mean, I don't really do pinky swears, but I sure would if you asked nicely. Um, I was hired by the man who entrapped me to make him some elemental type devices. And when I insisted that he was going too far, he insisted that I just stay a while. And then I ended up stuck. So if y'all want to get a little bit of a read on me, if anybody wants to give him like an insight check, like he's fully ready to tell you guys anything you want to know right now. Can I pull an insight check on Gertrude, actually? I want to see if, like, she's being coerced or anything. Absolutely you can, Theta. Go ahead, buddy. Cool beans. That is a 23. A 23. Yeah, Gertrude just looks smitten right now. Um, Like, she is a mixture of middle school girl at her first football game with her boyfriend um mixed with just like the adoration mixed with guilt this is clearly somebody that gertrude has known since her start of being like a part of the avowed and she just has not yet met anybody that she instantly trusted enough to help him um because as you guys can see your unique experience with helping her get rid of a long time problem at candle keep has proven to her that you guys are trustworthy enough even though one of you possessed a characteristic that was not necessarily great it opened the book and that's what she needed but she didn't trust even crinkle for example who clearly was the kind of person who would take a book out of candle keep um to open this for her so she could have done it a long time ago she's doing it now um, you do get the idea that this gentleman is like a love interest for her if she could have one, but he's a genie, so. Uh, I got a 28 on, on him. I just, now I want to know if he's actually, like, if Gertrude has his attention as much as, as she has his. <laughs> yeah, I have a five. Is this a love connection? Can we make this love connection? Yeah, or can do we, like, we need someone Can else? we pull yes. an Emma? Can we hook it up? <laughs> Candle keep matchmakers. Sorry. Um, <laughs> wow. Match. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah. So. No. I will say. Oh no. <laughs> um, long story short, with a, a role like that, he is fully entranced by you guys. You get the read that he is desperate. You get the read that he is not necessarily looking forward to what being released means for him, but he knows it's better than being stuck in this tone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get that. I will Nothing arrived earlier. Trouble will <laughs> No. <laughs> Theta. Theta, <laughs> mute yourself, babe. Theta, mute your mic. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought my mic was muted. No. No, You're so me, I'm sorry. On my end, the symbol was uh, red. I'm going to apologize to everyone. On my end, the symbol was red. It's all good. Good, buddy. You're fine. Trouble, um, Trouble's going to go ahead and um, is going to look at him and is going to just extend the pinky to make this pinky promise. And I'll be like, I will help you if you take Miss Gertrude out on a date once we're done. <laughs> And I said, but I said, but before you grab my pinky, just know pinky promises are sacred. If you break it, I will be taking your pinky with me. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, he looks at you kind of like, oh, is that, is that so? Um, and he'll smile and do that thing that like, <sighs> he doesn't like bite his lip, but they are pursed as he slowly extends a hand and begrudgingly gives you a pinky promise, Trouble. <laughs> because, you know, you literally introduced yourself to me as Trouble, and I fully intend on seeing where that ends up taking me, because I haven't been on an adventure in a very, very long time. Okay. He will release his pinky. Um... And kind of look at the book, he goes, now, hell, this works. I can stay out as long as you guys will it, or more specifically, treble, as long as you will it. If you get stuck with me, I mean, that's fully up to you. I'm a very consensual gen. I won't stay out unless y'all want an extra set of hands. I can't promise I can do a whole lot. But if you want opinions, I've got them. They might be a little outdated um gertrude's tried to keep me up to date but she's awful busy this one she does so much for everyone around her i just i'm so proud to call her a close friend honestly and gertrude is like almost foaming at the mouth she's like she's very excited to be talked up like this um great so he looks at everybody kind of like what do you guys want to do um, you guys have a couple of options. I mean, there's always more library to explore. Um, his situation, it's been like this for a very long time. The person that trapped him has clearly been somewhere for a very long time. You know that there are, um, wyverns that you will have to pass in order to get where he needs you to go. So if you feel prepared, you can do that. Um, so it's up to you guys as a party if you want to discuss. Well, uh, I have a couple spells that might be able to help us because I can speak with animals and also do beast bond if the wyverns are friendly or we can get them friendly. Um, and I also have sleep, which I'm sure maybe one of you wizards have as well. Sure. No? Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. If nothing else fails, we could try to put them to sleep. Perfect. Said the DM, not putting that in her back pocket for later. Uh, didn't mean to say that out <laughs> loud. My bad. I don't have a point. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> continue. Sorry. <laughs> uh-huh. 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 Uh -huh. Yeah. So if, if you guys are all like kind of nodding in agreement to each other, we'll say is what hap is happening right now. Um, Gertrude will hand you guys um a few gold and just say like Okay, so it's kind of a bit of a trek, but I have arranged, if you guys would like. Um, she did used to have a pretty handy dandy wagon, and I have it out back. You know, I've just been kind of like safekeeping it. Um, if you guys want to take that, you know, I have a couple of spare horses. If one of you, if you just want to ride the horses, if you want to take the wagon, it's a couple of days journey. Um, but you should be pretty okay, you know, with the wagon. I'll send you with supplies. Um, I have plenty of cookies. And um, I will actually send each of you guys with one of those handy dandy lemonades that you had earlier, too, if you'd like. Oh. Yeah, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, please. Yes, please. You had me at cookies. Perfect. Uh, Gertrude makes a small satchel of cookies, and she uses some spare jars um, with cork 
uh, like court stoppers, and she hands them out to you guys. You all get one. Uh, just a reminder: these lemonades are the effect of a long rest, so don't spill them. Um, and she'll <laughs> hand you all a bag of cookies, and you'll see as um, she's going out back. Um, if you guys all follow her, there are. Um, several horses at a stable um, here in Candlekeep, but there's also the wagon. So it's up to you guys if you want to take, you know, a couple horses in the wagon, or if you all just want the horse. They all have. I mean, I'm good, probably. (laughs) (laughs) Yep, he's like, whatever. (laughs) Okay, I'm just gonna say as a DM, we are not (laughs) forcing our centaur to pull the wagon. No! (laughs) This is a separate... (laughs) <laughs> um, I thought we were, like my brain immediately went to are we putting a ho- are we putting a centaur on a horse because I have questions <laughs> about the logistics it's not yeah. that kind of show um, <laughs> Pete you'll be, you'll be just fine buddy I'm not no all right great I just wanted to say that for your benefit like that wasn't my plan I didn't <laughs> I didn't expect you to volunteer uh so P is fine what does everybody else want to do? Well, I think the wagon makes the most sense um, with because we have several smaller party members that maybe could not handle a fully grown horse by themselves. Just like size wise, I would love to see a gnome trying to ride like a huge stallion, but I don't think that's safe. <laughs> They are just regular horses. They're not like, they're not like Clydesdales or anything. Uh, but it probably would. I mean, we could get you a custom saddle uh, if if you wanted to, Tana. It's not that big of a deal. I I think a cart sounds good. <laughs> awesome. All right. So as a party, we've decided to do a couple horses, pee on the side, and everybody else is on the wagon. Yes. Yes. Cool. P. I will say you will not take any of the effects of like exhaustion or anything it's just kind of assumed that you can do a couple day journey uh you've probably done this before in fact uh with you all starting a couple levels in on this um perfect okay and second thing i need to know are we keeping gaz out or are we putting the book away Don't everybody do it all at once. Uh, <laughs> is so is is Treble the one that can open and close it because they because she has that okay. Yeah. Right. So it's up the, it's up to her. Yeah, the corporeal like padlock that's on it. Um you notice it's kind of on like a magical chain and it drags on the ground. Treble, you would have seen this, you could have easily picked it up. Um, but yeah, the chain mm-hmm. will you can tell will manifest back onto the book to lock it. Um, okay. when the book's closed. So I can lock it and unlock it as I please. Correct. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to say that I'll leave it open for now. Okay. Uh, you see as Gaz like, um, materializes, <laughs> he yeah. materializes like his own kind of like floating bench um, in the back of the wagon to sit next to you. Unless you wanted to ride in front. I should have asked if you wanted to ride in front. Where are we? I, I need to know in relation on the wagon, where does everybody take their spots? And P, I need to know if you're in the front, on the side, or in back. P's going to be walking like next to the horses because okay. P has a soft spot for horses and is like, time to get back in the saddle, guys. Am I right? Like trying to make jokes <laughs> and like wrapping their arms around them. Like, I love you guys. <laughs> Wait, so like P, when you say adjacent to the horses, are you like next to like horse, horse, P or horse, P, horse? Is that like with your arms around them? Is that what you're saying? I, I feel like, like that's what you want. I feel like I would really like to be able to appreciate both of my friends at the same time. So definitely P sandwich, loving my buddies. A P sandwich. Great. Uh, P. At hearing this, Gertrude is thrilled that her pets will be taken well care of. You are given a bag of various horse treats. You've got like some carrots, you've got some sugar cubes. Um, And you guys can already tell these horses are well trained. Um, As long as they know where to go, they will go there. Um, They don't need like uh, really controlled much at all. So you guys get the feeling if you needed to take even a long or short rest, 
you could just do so and they would continue on the trip. Um, they don't provide any torch, like sort of safety, but these are magic reading climb steeds. Um, does anybody else want to do anything before you depart for the um, the wetland caves? Is there like a seat on the outside of the cart? Like, so like behind where P and the horses would be, there'd be like a little seat. Sure. Yeah. Th this is like a, um, like a regular cart. I... So like you've got like the covered back um, that the cover can be taken off and yeah, you can sit like where the driver yeah. would sit if they're needed yeah. for the driver. Yeah, sure. Okay. I say that I would sit there and I would have the book open next to me okay. that way. <laughs> that way I don't have to hold it and it can still be open and G can just look around and we can both see the world as we are moving along. Perfect. Okay. Great. Uh, Gazer is Zam approves. Uh, anybody else? I think there's three of you left. Are we just sitting like in the back? Are we dangling our feet off of the edge? What are we doing? I'm, I'm watching behind us with the, with my feet dangling off the back of the cart. Love that for Soren. Good. Hannah will sit next to someone larger than her because one good bump and she's just popping right out of the cart. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. She's going to sit next to someone who can do like the mom seat <laughs> just in case. <laughs> uh, Adara or Thorin, I'll leave it up to one of you guys, whoever wants to be the mom seat belt. Um, Adara's probably fully in the cart, just like reading a book or something. Perfect. I am used to to mom arming a, a person that size, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will ask too: Is anybody actively scouting? Is there like a person in the front and the person in the back? Um, I know Adara is not. Adara is comfy in the back with a nice, good book. Um, but I will I will assume the people in the front and the people in the back, just for clarity's sake, that you guys are keeping a watch so to speak yep, yep um trouble yep as you guys begin your journey um gazrizam i like saying his name even if he doesn't uh starts to spill a little tea for you here um so here's what's going on um i know the one in the back uh soren i think was it um knows a little bit about, you know, the Genasi people. Um, I kind of fell into a crowd where myself as an air Genasi was seemed as valuable towards one of the water sorts. Um, hence while we're going towards a cave that is surrounded by water, conveniently, it's a little bit harder to get to for folks like myself. Um, do all y'all know how to swim? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes he'll, he'll turn to the back and ask to like the people in the wagon like do y'all know how to swim um probably should have asked this before i i don't oh, need to God. breathe so I'll, I'll be fine oh great tana can swim soren doesn't need to, need to know how to breathe cool i great. don't have a swimming speed but i am i live on the up coast so like i would imagine Adora I, has an idea of how to put feet in water and move. I will say, growing up on the coast, yes, you did have a swimming <laughs> lesson or two or three. Um, P, if it's okay with you, um, horses naturally know how to swim or at least like kick their feet. So if you want to have that instinct as a centaur, I'll allow that. Um, Treble, you're the only. Do you know how to swim? Absolutely. Great. I in every D and D campaign I've ever been in, somebody has had the personality trait where they 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 either don't know how to read or they don't know how to swim. It's it's one of the two. So I just wanted to see. I just wanted to get a, a general idea of what kind of a group I'm working with. Great. All right. So as you guys depart, um, all right. Long story short, just to tell y'all fully before we're within like a mile of the Candlekeep Library, just in case anyone wants to turn around, that's fully an option. Um, this man is a wizard. I see y'all have two of those yourselves. So y'all are probably familiar with those who are up to more nefarious activities. Um, this one in particular was interested in building a castle fortress in the sky. 
um, which I told him as an heir to Dicey was not a good idea because what goes up must come down, as y'all understand, I'm sure. Gravity exists whether we like it to or not. Um, so once I told him this, and I tried to make myself as completely unhelpful as I possibly could, I mean, I was putting rocks in this man's shoes. I was throwing everything he owned into the water. I mean, I threw this man's entire wardrobe at one point out into the damn ocean. I mean, there was clothing everywhere and that didn't stop him. Instead, he decided just to put a stronger spell on me than I already had before and kind of bind me to this here book. So um, I just wanted to tell y'all, this is very important to me. And um, I do have, I do have, an enticement of sorts if y'all you know actually end up making this happen for me just because it's been so darn long and i do have a um a date waiting for me when we get back and he winks at you trouble i do have the ability to give not three wishes unfortunately that's a little bit of a high tide a high tide tail uh get it because we're going to the ocean uh anyway and he kind of like laughs at himself and continues I do have access to a wish spell that I could give you guys as a group, as long as this goes well. Um, I know this is a lot to ask, and I just wanted to say thank you. So I just want to give everybody the opportunity to back out now. Um, this is a dangerous man, and I don't want to deal with, you know, the repercussions of putting folks that respect Gertrude, who is a very good judge of character, um, in harm's way without their full consent. So do you think this man might be able, like, might kill us? Is that I why mean, you're... I mean, I am literally a genie, and he was able to put me in a book. So, um, I don't know what that says about me. I mean, maybe I'm just a weaker man than I once thought, but Anything's possible. Um, so I'm just putting it all out there, as it were. I have nothing to hide. I've been in a book for years. I like that you're self, self-reflective. You're reflective of your, of yourself. But that's- Ow. He, he'll look back at Tana, he goes, um, no offense, but I believe we're talking about my shortcomings. Is that is that what is that what you were trying to say, Treble? And and he kind of looks back, he goes, uh honestly, I would be in quite a bigger pickle if those shorter than myself. Yeah, you can tell he's used to people like um being mad at him for the wish that he provides when being helped. Like he's the kind of genie that like people regret their wishes from him. So Consent is very important to him. Possibly offending anybody is very important to him. Um, honestly, you guys, without a perception check, get the idea that he's a little bit reluctant to give a wish spell, but that's kind of the rule of helping a genie, um, is getting one. So he's giving you the opportunity to not get a wish, is what I'll just give you guys for free. So, that's what's happening. Um, Great. Uh, if none of you object, um, then you guys are going to definitely um, continue on here. So this does take a couple days. Um, I'll say I'll give you the first day for free. The second day, I am going to need everybody to do some sort of watch for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So if everybody would just mind um, rolling me a, a flat d20. I will tell you guys if anything happens the second day. <laughs> oh, no. We love that. <laughs> that one from Tana. Oh. One. oh, no. Well, that's better than mine. No, it's not. It's worse. Mine's better. I feel better about mine. I, I'm, I'm shook. Everybody had bad reactions. We're screwed. No. <laughs> Four, five, nat one. Adara? Twelve. Twelve P. Twelve. Oh, Whoa! No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Um, Rocks fall, we die. <laughs> so here's the here's the problem. Um, you guys see circling overhead. You were told that there were a few um, wyverns over in this area. Um, gosh, with a nat one, I will say all all three of them are are circling overhead like vultures. They are several thousand feet up, but you should not be able to see a bird flying that high, so you know it's not a bird. Um, discuss amongst yourselves. Can we just say that Tana fell asleep on her watch? I feel like that's fitting for <laughs> that one. Yes, Tana fell asleep. Um, okay. Tana would have been the first one on watch, and you guys lost an entire few hours. So before you even noticed, um, unfortunately, the wyverns were able to spot you guys. That makes logical story sense, Anna. Great. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to prepare anything, I mean, it's going to take them a while to get down. Like they're being methodical about this. So if anybody wants to do anything, if anybody wants to prep anything, if you guys just want to talk as a group, now would be the time. Oh, I am can't we just run? <laughs> you can ask the horses nicely to go faster. I will say as you guys approach the coast, the ground is getting muddier. So you run the risk of harming the wagon. Um, it is not, I mean, it's well built, but it is an older wagon. Um, Candlekeep didn't really have a better one to spare, hence why you guys are using um, gases. And the horses can only last going that fast after, I mean, I will say you guys definitely took a break to like water and feed the horses pee. I'm sure you were very careful to ensure that they were properly taken care of for Gertrude. Um, but they probably can't go for more than like four or five hours at like a speed enough to outrun uh, literal types of dragons. Sure is an option though. Sure is. Uh, you can always run. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm a uh, tiny hut. A tiny hut in the back of the in the hut. back of the wagon. I don't know how that would work, but I can make a house out of nowhere. So, how how big? <laughs> remind me, Theta. How big is the tiny hut? I, I think don't it's a know. it's a ten foot diameter. I think it, it, yeah. it's a surprisingly big hut for a tiny yeah. hut. Mm-hmm. That's my only contribution to this. Um, yeah. I can make us invisible, actually. <laughs> I, I can make me invisible. Yeah, I can make one person invisible. Um, I can well. also polymorph someone into something. Yeah, I can upcast invisibility. I could... <sighs> yeah, I could upcast invisibility. <laughs> I could try to blight one of them. I don't think that's helpful, but we can blight one of them if they get close enough. <laughs> Me, well, we could give them one of the horses, but that's like, no, no. <laughs> We'd be in so much trouble. Uh, no. <laughs> can you imagine me telling that to P? Like, P, we're going to have to sacrifice. Right? Them. Can you imagine telling that to Gertrude? Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. The double one whammy. One of your horses. We fed it to wyverns because, you know, they were hungry. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> mm -mm. I'm not yeah. dealing with that. <laughs> Jazz will, like, nod at you, Sora, and he'll go, yeah, um, honestly, that might have an opposite effect. Um, they might be inclined to think that you're going to sacrifice the other one if you were so willingly giving up the first. So um, we might be without transportation real quick, unfortunately, if we take that road. And he'll kind of wince and like look up at P, who is very happily in between these two horses, just making sure that they're comfy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that was o, that was O C. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that in character. I don't got a thick <laughs> accent, just my regular accent. <laughs> uh, 
I think a girl will be like, perhaps it's better if we just continue until they get close enough that a fight breaks out. I don't know if there's much we can do from this distance. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree with that. Is there any cover that we can get under, like forest or anything? It's a bit of a toss up for you guys. So I will say this, mm. if somebody wants to roll me a D100, I will put a 20% um, window somewhere within that 100%. And that'll be the percent chance that you guys make it to the cave before the white burns. But that's up to you guys. This could be something stupid like 18 to 30. Who's feeling lucky? Like <laughs> that's the question, I guess. Yeah. Not me. Not me. And I will even, just to hold myself accountable, I'm going to like pre write it on this so I can like show you guys. Because this is this is like high this is high stakes. Um, Nobody do... wants the responsibility of it of rolling for it. <laughs> I, mean, I will take that I mean, bad luck on me, but when my dice is across the room, I have to go run and get it. Look, I already I rolled a net one, so it's only up from here, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe in your karma. You can have good karma. Oh, it's never been easier with D&D Beyond. Um, what am I rolling? <laughs> Just a, a D20? Or a percentile? A D100. Okay. It would be the 100 and the 10, right? 46? Oh. Are you kidding? No. It's a 48! <laughs> <laughs> wow! That could have been so bad for you guys. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, I am going to say good job, Tana. Wow, buddy. Um, 20% out of 100. That was, wow. Okay. Wonderful. So <laughs> you guys notice as the wyverns seem to take interest in something that doesn't look as fighty as you guys. Um, probably like a herd of cattle or something else on the coast, like um, a school of fish, perhaps. Um, and they just head off to hunt something other than you all. Congratulations. Um, they are still a problem, but they are currently not your problem. So you can, Gertrude did ask you to take care of them, but um you will have if this goes well you will have a wish spell so you could technically just wish them away like they never existed after all of this um perfect okay so as you guys are approaching uh the seaside cave um gazray azam will once again address the party um all right so long story short here y'all um i have not seen this man in a very long time he goes by z uh otherwise known as zipran uh his enchantment is very much intact with me i i am not sure any of my power will work it did not even when i was not attached to the book because of our uh contract and agreement for me to help him make some enchant uh, enchanted ob objects so this is the last place i saw him i'm not even sure if he's here but um if he is if anybody has any sort of protection, I would probably recommend you use it. Um, and with that, uh, we're here. And you see as he looks up, and you guys all see this cave. On the coast, after traveling for two days with a night in between, it is nearing dusk. So across the ocean, you guys have the sun that's setting a beautiful pink coral color that matches a spire made of uh, color, colored um, coral that's kind of jutting out from this cave towards like in the, in the top, 
like a, a watchtower of sort, if it were to be hollowed out, you can't see anything from, from this distance away, but it is very prominent. You probably would have to try very hard to not see this thing. And if you just so happen to stand at the base of the spire, you're able to see inside the cave and just how vastly deep it is. Um, and G looks at everybody and he goes, um, when I was last here, this was a laboratory and sanctum for Z. So um, if he is still here, I'm not sure if he would have protected himself with traps. I'm not sure if he would have buffed himself um, potentially with another Jan like myself uh, with the promise of a wish. Um, or in my case, you know, the wish he used against me. So we'll, uh, we'll just have to see. Is everybody all right? Um, can I just get like a, a general vibe check? And he's like smiling towards the back of the cart just to make sure everybody's still with him. Um, specifically Adara, cause you were reading a book. Um, just kind of making sure that you're lucid enough at attention where if there yeah. were a trap, you'd be okay. Perfect. Uh, I'll just kind of do drama <laughs> on myself if anyone else wants, I can do it there too. <laughs> great um he instructs you all um you can easily um everybody go ahead give me athletics checks as you guys descend down the cliffs uh to get to this cave and there is down here a small not necessarily a bridge anymore but planks that look stable enough leading from the bottom of this cliff over to the cave with the giant coral spire on top He got a 14. A 14. Uh, Baba Yaga, we are rolling athletics checks. Awesome. Uh, oh, not awesome. I always play like fighters. Ooh, 15. <laughs> 15. Okay, 14, 15. Anybody else? Seven. Seven. Okay. 13. 13. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Tana, what'd you get? I don't want to talk about it. Did you? Mm -hmm. it too? Okay, I saw it. I just, like, I wanted to make sure <laughs> the audience knew how bad of lucky, luck you're having this evening. Um, I'm going to switch to physical dice. I'll be, that's, I'll be right that's back. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> perfect um when tana grabs those physical dice um tana so listen i'm gonna need you to give me a deck save because it is a little spiky at the bottom of the cliff um a lot of you know large pieces of sea glass and wood that is Face up in the sand. Um, you'd be so kind as to try and avoid that. I'd love to try. <laughs> mm -hmm. A five? Oh no! A three plus two. Wait, what? So what? What? <sighs> oh, I'm so here's sorry. I threw yeah. my broken uh, dice from last time. That's what <sighs> happened. If. Tana is about to take any damage. I'll use my arcane ward to sponge it. Here's my problem as a DM. I love opportunities like this because I imagine Tana not being. I mean, Tana, you as a wizard, what are what is your clothing like? It's nice. It's a lot of cottons and silks and and soft fabrics, like flowy stuff. Yeah. Not quite flowy, but definitely not durable. Like loose at all. Yeah. Have like a cloak. Perfect. Yeah. So here's what's going to happen. I am going to roll a d20. If I okay. get 10 or below, Tana is stuck by her cloak uh, on a large piece of driftwood and just kind of dangling there. Uh, <laughs> if I roll an 11 to 20, 
that doesn't happen. Uh, and Tana will take a little bit of damage from falling in the sand. But I'm really enjoying these odds tonight. And I think <laughs> I think the dice are really telling a good story. So I, I love fails. Play. Great. <sighs> um, all right. Perfect. Great. I am pleased to say that was a three. So everybody gets to look around um, as you hear a shh as a slow and steady rip followed by the poof of Tana's weight tugging at the top of the driftwood as it catches on the piece of fabric on her person. As Tana just begins to swing a little bit in the sea breeze. Um, as she dangles, probably just what with your hands like at your sides, like, well, you're about six feet up. You're fine, but like somebody's gonna have to get you down. What's my <laughs> um, help! Uh, I'll I'll help. I'll help. I'll, no. <laughs> Corinne's gonna uh, rush. Sorry, I was drawing a picture of this real quick because I love it. Uh, I had to do a quick sketch, but yeah, Soren's gonna. Oh my goodness, you just you just got yourself all tops and turvy now, didn't she? And pick her up and gently set her down. <laughs> how how tall is Soren? Uh, she's like six and a half feet tall. Six so and a half. She okay, would be able so with to... a jump. Soren is able, easily able to jump a couple of feet to like unhook, you know, the cape from the top of it. Perfect. Excellent. Great. Tana, you now have a piece of, of clothing with a hole in it, but it's fine. Otherwise, <laughs> a little bit, but it's it's okay. Uh great. Perfect. Uh... Um I'll say if Tana doesn't mind, I think Adora will step in and go, Oh, do you um do you want it fixed? Oh, yeah, do you do you have that? Can you yeah. Okay. Cool. And I'll just cast mending, because mending can fix tears in fabric, and that is one of the only useful applications for that spell. <laughs> <laughs> I just have it. It really is. Keeping oneself you know proper. Wow. Perfect. All right, great. Production, please let me know if I just absolutely screwed up um, your nice little situation there. But I just put a small map of where you guys are. Um, the laboratory map. Great, perfect, wonderful. It's that looks like, hey, good. it's in frame. Great, thank you. Awesome. All right, so this is where you guys are. You are currently um, adjacent to the mouth of the cave. I'll say you guys got over here fairly easily. Um, immediately right off the bat, you guys can tell two things. One, um, where you guys currently are is flooded with seawater at the entrance. So you will have to swim inside. The walls are not exactly traversable as they are very slick with green algae and sea moss and the cave walls themselves are made of solid rock. So I wouldn't suggest banging anything into them. So that's why I asked if you all could swim because otherwise this would be rather difficult for all of you. But also you don't know if there's anything in the water here. So, you know, it is what it is. Perfect. Um, I will say the spire too is about 10 feet across um, as seen on the left-hand side of the map. Um, and it's pretty, it's pretty tall. You guys got the idea that if you got to the very top of it, you'd be able to see pretty far out. Not that you'd need to, um, cause it's taller than the top of the cave, but it's about 40 feet above the water. And through the gentle waves that are beginning to come in with the tide this evening, you see that it extends down to a coral reef that would absolutely destroy any kind of seafaring vehicle that dared to sail directly into the cave. And honestly, it looks like it was placed here for that purpose. There are no fish. There are no, um, the only thing that makes it a coral reef is coral itself. So it's like somebody stuck a giant 
unicorn horn style piece of, of coral just right in front of the mouth of this cave. So that is trap number one. Thankfully, you guys did not elect to try and find a boat or anything because you would have crashed. So that's good. That's just a peek behind the DM curtain. Cool. Question for Soaring. Um, with your, I'm going to say that you can easily, you can easily see underwater and you don't have to breathe. So you can probably spend a little bit extra time. Um, provided you all want to start swimming in. Is that what's happening? What's happening? Do you guys want to do anything else? Okay, perfect. I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> I wish I had water breathing. That's a hell of a spell. <laughs> I feel like someone would start taking off her hoodie. Like, all right, let's let's get it going. Oh <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. Does anybody wear heavy armor? Anything higher than medium? Okay. Good. Got news from everybody. Excellent. Uh, I had to Lauren, <laughs> <laughs> give me a perception check, as I will say, you have a little bit. Um, of an opportunity to look in the water um, a little bit deeper than anybody else too, with you being a ranger and having that special sight. Oh no. I rolled a nat two, so that's 11. Oh no. Um, I mean, even with a nat two, it's not exactly hidden. There are very long claw marks in sets of four in the coral leading to and from the flooded part of the cave. Um, do you want to give me a nature check to see if you can determine what made them? Oh, sure. It, no. <laughs> Hopefully not another... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's a five. A five? If you want to mm -hmm. tell anybody else about it, I will say, yeah. unless somebody else has an argument for why you would also be able to do what Soaring did, your nature check will be a disadvantage. Um, if anybody yeah, wants to fight, you can I point out the claw marks to everybody. Okay. I mean, it's a thing, probably. It looks like maybe a whale or, or I don't know. <laughs> Whales have legs. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have claws? I believe they have vestigial legs with claws on them. <laughs> Hold on a second. Can I nature? I, I don't think they do. So are you primarily cleric or primarily ranger? Um, Ranger, but not that kind of ranger. I'm a, I'm okay. a fey ranger. I'm a fey wild <laughs> ranger. Oh, no. So everything is just a little bit weird. Perfect. Great. That's still very funny to me. Whales, it might have been a whale. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Whale? Have, now, I, now I have to homebrew whales with claws. Have you no, ever have, seen a whale? Well, yes. I I've, I've believe I've met the acquaintance of one at a party once, but um, I really <laughs> couldn't say for certain because we all had masks on. How is it singing? I, uh, it wasn't that kind of party. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hmm. um, uh, but anyway, yeah, there's just, there's some claw marks. So there's probably something, maybe it's a bear or they're underwater bears. <laughs> I'm going to, I, mean, I want to roll. Do, am I, do I roll it with disadvantage? Yes. All right. Matt. Unless somebody else wants to help, then I can just say it's a straight roll. <laughs> That's fine. I'll help. Us. I'll help. Anything. I just feel like, I just feel like I'm trying to figure out what it is. Anything to get rid of the potential canon of there being sea bears. I got, a, I got a 19. A 19. Thank goodness. Bear. Wonderful. <laughs> Great. These were made by a young dragon, Treble. Um, definitely not the same claw pattern as the wyverns that were flying above you guys on your way in. But um, a dragon, young the young the, the less yeah it's a young dragon um great cool um perfect are you all swimming into the cave even knowing this information 
Yes. I will be taking out a dagger, but yes. Perfect. Can you swim with great while trying to keep concentration on a spell? So all the flooded cave does to you guys is anybody without a swimming speed, this is difficult terrain for you. So it takes twice your movement to move through it. I don't need anything else from you. So if you wanted to do like a spell or something, you you can. I think I'll use up greater in, not greater, I'll use up regular invisibility, just cast that on myself. Cool. You know. Is anybody else doing anything? Um, is this non-magical or is it considered magical terrain? Uh, this is non-magical. Okay. So with land stride, um, moving through costs me no extra movement. And I can also move through non-magical plants, but it's you said it's just the coral. So um, yeah. So yeah, no disadvantage or extra movement. Okay, perfect. How long does that last, Sorn? That's just a, it's a, it's a ranger ability. So it's just all the time. If it's non-magical, it's not difficult for me. Um, it's not like pass without a tracer or anything where it affects the group. Cool. Um, travel. I will say this, this is an enchanted book um, enchanted by somebody who lived in this watery cave. It cannot get wet and ruined as you tell almost immediately. Um, and Gaz would have told you this. Um, so are you are you closing it to swim? Are you trying to hold it open to swim? Are we, <laughs> I'm just curious how you're juggling this right now. Does it float or is it too heavy? You know, it does float. And I'll even, I'll even say, hmm, I'll say this. Okay, perfect. So here's what happens. Trouble, you notice because this is floating, I'm imagining you would keep it in front of you. Yes. As the sea breeze, this is a very interesting way for this to happen. Uh, As the sea breeze follows you, as you all slowly swimming uh, into this cave, the pages turn to the next section of the book after the blank pages. And they are observations of Gazray Azam's behavior during his time of servitude to Zikron. And you can tell this man was very upset with him by the time he enchanted him to stay in this book forever. Um, When, I mean, Gaz was underselling the stuff that he was doing to him for sure. Um, Just even skimming it a little bit. It's just... It's pretty much like a diary of some sort. Um, I will say though, you are definitely, now that you're in this cave, getting a magical aura from this book and not just Gaz. So I will say it is not something that you as a rogue know it is. It would require um, a pretty high intelligence, like Arcana check. So if you wanted to attempt it, you can. Um, that's up to you. <laughs> Chick's head, no. <laughs> um, I will say you guys are all within seeing distance of this thing. Um, does either wizard want to attempt an arcana check? Sure. Okay. I like, I like. Anybody can, can, can I'm just can telling I- you. Can I assist to give advantage? Sure. Uh, This will be a swimming lesson style read. Um, You know, like when you're learning with those little... (laughs) (laughs) See, you guys are both holding on to one end and kind of peering over, looking at each other. I love it. With your heads above the water. Yeah. So go ahead. Who's rolling it, Theta? I'll roll then, yeah. I have like a plus nine. So hopefully this goes well. What? What's your intelligence mod my intelligence mod oh no no i mean like oh sorry i was asking hype goblin oh i have a plus i have a plus two okay oh yours probably because of other stuff yeah yeah my arcana though is a a plus six cool yeah uh so i rolled 
fastening enough, I rolled a 19 and a 20. So that will be 29. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Um, here's what you find out here, Adara. So <sighs> this thing used to be a wizard's spell book, and you don't know how, but at some point the spells were removed in such a way to leave the pages blank except for the ones that were not spells, which are the complaint oh. pages. Huh. So does it still have magic intertwined with it from the spells itself that were previously written? You are getting a very strong aura from this book. Oh, that's interesting. Do... That seems a little petty. That, or did the wizard remove his own spells to trap Gaz, to trap Gazri here? Me? Uh, Gaz is looking. Oh, I, I, I sure, I sure didn't do that. If you're, if you're asking me, if I was the one that, I mean, I, sh I sure am petty, but I don't have. I mean, I can do a lot of things well, but that isn't one of them, unfortunately. And he kind of sheepishly looks down at the blank pages. Like, I sure wish I could help, though. Do you remember if there ever were spells in this book? Oh, for sure. I, I used to actually, I mean, I didn't think this was the same book. He has a lot of blue books with, you know, white bindings. But um, that sure makes a lot of sense, knowing that this was his spell book. I mean, how else could it be holding a man like me? And he kind of it looks down at what would be his feet, but our betrayal binded him to the book. That's hmm. interesting. Would like some sort of restoration work? I can't um, do that yet, but you don't know. Did he wish You'd for you to, to be a bookmark? <laughs> Um, uh, you know, my life would sure be a lot more boring and I wouldn't have been able to communicate with Gertrude very well if that had been the case. So hmm. to my astonishment, no, that is not what he wished for. He just wished that I be bound to this book. Um is could have been a lot worse spells, though. Is that when the spells disappeared or were they did they do you remember if the spells disappeared before or after you were bound to the book? Oh, I've seen him with a spell book. Um, I was adjacent to a page um, that was open that had complaints on it before um, I was here. And I, to be honest, I wasn't really paying attention to the book that he was putting me in. I was trying to avoid it at all costs. So I apologize. Okay. I have no it idea. It is perfectly fine. <laughs> no, like, yeah, I wouldn't expect that of you. Are Perfect. we near the shore yet? Um, you guys are, like, in the cave. Um, yes. You are close to the first little bit of um, accessible land. Yes. Tana's gonna take a quill out of her bag and some ink and try to write, uh... This, this gin is the best gin that ever was. I just kind of want to see if it's gonna disappear. <laughs> uh... No, surprisingly, the words stay, and Gaz beams, <laughs> and he gives you a wink. Like, oh, thank you, lady. That means a lot. Uh, no, you're very yeah. welcome. I just wanted to see if the words were going to get twisted into something by the spell, or if the book itself was going to eat them. I mean, you no. Know, you mean what? Oh no, come. I'll say this out. He was just going to say, well, if I had a pen myself, I would have tried that years ago. So, um, perfect. Um, as you guys enter here, um, what you thought was land just so happens to be some floating driftwood with some clothes attached. And they look to be two matching sets of the same outfit. Um, and you do see... Um, is anybody, are you trying to stay above water? Soren, are you still looking below water at all? Um, yeah, I'm just, I imagine that I'm just like walking along the bottom of the water. <laughs> just perfect. Great. Uh, Soren, there are two sets of 
matching bones on the ground um, under all this water. Oh, well, I, I better take those up. I'm not good with medicine, but P is. Okay, awesome. Uh, so you take them up. There is a little bit of shore on like the far end. So if you want to take them and deposit them, um, it's enough for maybe two people to sit on. Um, so yeah. You could sit on it with the bones. Um, or I will say the only other one of you that could fit is Tana. Yeah, I won't. I won't get up there with them, but I'll I'll put the bones like up and, and lay them out. Um, so okay. I don't know. <laughs> Is anybody taking the clothing that's on the driftwood? Or are we leaving it be? I'll take it because I like taking stuff. Cool. Awesome. Great. Uh, the second. <sighs> The second you touch the clothing, Treble, there are two small ghosts that float oh. up. Yeah, from a pair of necklaces that were caught on one of the branches on this driftwood. And they just stare at you and cock their heads. Well, hello. How how are y'all? Um you don't hear anything from them. They appear to, like, whisper in your head. Hello. Nice to see you visitors. It's been so long. It, how, how long have you been here? Uh, they look at each other and shrug and look back at you. Oh. Okay. Well, how did... Um... How did you find yourselves in your current state? Uh, give me um, a medicine check. Oh. Okie dokie, smoky. That is a seven. Plus a one, an eight. It's an eight. An eight. Between the bones and the clothes and the two ghosts that are speaking to you and yourself alone, trouble in your head, um, you glean that they're dead and they died with an eight. <laughs> that's, that's that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'll just tell the rest of the group. So we got, uh, we got two dead folks here. Um, and they're, they're whispering in my head. Um, I asked what happened to them and how did they die? And I, I didn't, I didn't get much of an answer, but they're definitely dead. Um, so I, I I guess I'm just gonna I don't know, I, something in here is uh is killing people. So we should probably be alert to that. I'm gonna pull my sickle out and then look at P like helplessly <laughs> because we keep running into all these dead bodies and like it's just like what in the world. <laughs> uh is it possible that I could take a closer look and see if I could try to do a check on it? Yes, it would also be a medicine check for you, Pete. Okay, I feel pretty good about this. Pubs crossed. Oh my god, it's a 10. <laughs> a 10? I mean, oh my god. <laughs> you, that, that was the DC on this. It is not that hard to tell that there these clothes are no more altered by anything other than the tide bringing them in and out of this cave on the driftwood um the tears in the clothing there are no blood stains um the tears in the clothing are adjacent with that of the parts of them that are torn are the parts that were stuck on the driftwood um you get the impression with their bones being down below um and this room being flooded all the time you notice it does not go out with the tide um they drowned I share that information with everyone. Perfect. P, as you are sharing, and I'm assuming like showing that the bones don't have any damage to them, to everybody, the ghosts glare at you and you could swear for a second that you see their blank holes that they have for eyes um, glow red 
with anger for a second. And I need um, everybody to roll initiative. Just to be clear, where is everyone right now? Who is in the water? Who is out of the water? I'm out of the water. I'm also fully invisible. <laughs> <laughs> would would I have time to um, do Vigilant Blessing, which gives one creature I touch advantage on the initiative roll? I will say that you guys all had the opportunity to do a free action. Um, Pease was telling you all that they drowned. Um, okay. So in the time that it took P, yes, you can... Adara, would you roll for initiative? Uh, 14. Uh, Tana? 15. And are you in or out? Uh, I, I'm probably out by now. All right. Um, so we've got you two and the bones, right? I know that soaring. You said that you were in the water. Would you roll? A seven. Okay. P. I also rolled a seven. Perfect. <laughs> Last but not least, trouble. You're muted, buddy. What'd you say? Oh, sorry. I'm. I rolled a nineteen. Was the driftwood? The driftwood was in the water, right? Yes, driftwood yeah. is floating in the water. So I'm still in the water, and I rolled a nineteen. Cool. So it's going to be trouble, Tana. Dara, and then Soaring versus P, what is your dex? That is a fantastic question. <laughs> you asked. 16. <laughs> okay. No, what she just wants to know what your dex is for the, the tiebreaker. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> We don't have to make a save, like, thank what? God. Um, help me know where I'm. 12. <laughs> All right, so it's going to be storing, and then P is wrapping it up at the end. Perfect. Um, the ghosts rolled really bad. Great. All right. So starting us off, our, our order is... <clears throat> We've got Trouble, Tana, followed by Adara and Soaring, followed by P, and then the ghosts. And those that are out are Adara and Tana, and everybody else is in the water. Great. All right. Uh, Trouble, what are you doing? You are the lucky first one in initiative. Um, I'm trying to figure out what to do against ghosts. <laughs> um. Let's see. What do I have? What do I have? Okay, I would say that I'm probably really close to them. Um, did 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 we also was P the only one who saw their eyes go red, or did anybody else see it? If anybody else was looking at them, yes, you could see their okay, eyes. Okay, I would, I would say that I was probably looking at them. Sure. Um, just because I'm so close to them after getting their clothes and stuff, so. Um, <laughs> I would say that I saw their eyes glow. So, like, as a knee jerk reaction, I just kind of swipe <laughs> to like an unarmed strike, like straight through. Okay, great. Uh, go ahead and roll to hit. <laughs> this is what I just reacted like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It's, let's see what we get. It's an 11. All right. That does hit. Go ahead and roll me damage. And I need to know what kind of damage it is too, please. Um, I think an unarmed strike is just too bludgeoning. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Great. Uh, so this thing, even an unarmed strike, uh, does not look like it hurts it as much as it should. Um, great. Is that all you're doing on your turn? Are you staying in one spot? Are you moving? Do you have a bonus action? Um, I will probably, um, once I, oof, I will probably like roll away. Well, not roll away. I'd probably start <laughs> swimming away. 
<laughs> okay. So I probably started swimming away with, I still have the book, right? Correct? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'd probably still like, I'd probably just start booking it away from them as I'm dragging the book with me. Okay. Um, they do not choose to have an opportunity attack on you. Um, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and say, Tana, it's your turn, buddy. And Adara, you're on deck. Uh, okay. Um, Tana's going to cast haste, uh, haste on soaring. <laughs> All right. And that will be my turn. Perfect. All right. So soaring is extra speedy. Great. Adara, uh, soaring's on deck. I will, um, do their turn for them if they are not back in time. Are the ghosts in the water or no, not really? The ghosts are floating above the water. Okay, maybe so no. Fun. That wouldn't count then. Because uh, my thought was then maybe to shock and grasp the water. Um, I will... Yeah, let's see if this works. I'm going to try Toll the Dead on just one of the ghosts. Either one, I guess. Uh, and let's see if Necrotic... It's Necrotic Damage takes any sort of effect they have to make a wisdom uh, yeah they have to make a wisdom saving though all right uh that's a 20 they rolled a 19. Oh, that's my save dc okay so i guess that doesn't work uh yeah that's all i can do Adari noticed two things mm -hmm. um necrotic um it doesn't do anything to them okay. anyway. Like they don't even look scared of it. Good to know. Um, cool. All right. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go for soaring. Uh, soaring is super fast now. So I'm going to say soaring goes to the other side of the two of them, giving advantage via flanking to anybody who decides to attack them next. Um, and does not. Uh, like she's just gonna go right through them and not take an opportunity attack because of haste. Okay, uh, P, you are up. Um, I think P is going to cast Aura of Purity, which is going to uh, have purifying energy radiating within the 30 foot radius. So everyone that's not hostile is uh, not going to be able to get diseased. They have resistance to poison damage an advantage on saving throws against effects that cause blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, paralyzed, poisoned, and stunned. Wow. Okay. Could you copy and paste that in our Absolutely. Chat? Perfect. Um, is that all you're doing on your turn? Are you moving at all? Um, no, I think I'll stay where I am. Perfect. All right. That is the ghost's turn. Um, I am going to say, who's the closest? Um, they are probably most tempted. I'm going to say one of them is going to head over to Tana, and the other one is going to go for Soaring. So Tana, does an 18 hit you? Yep. That is, um, shoot. 19 necrotic damage <laughs> Ow. and does a 16 hit soaring sure does that's armor class gosh all right fun Can... cool uh Damn soaring it. does have a plus two to ac Oh, that's right. Because of haste. That's right, because of haste. Thank and you. I was actually going to say can I use my arcane ward to just basically send it to absorb the damage off of Tana so oh stable 19. sure can absolutely cool. sounds good all right uh that is their turns one of them is now over by you tana and the other one is beside soaring perfect all right trouble back at the top of the order buddy all right um i think at this point i am now on i would assume i'm out of the water at this point um, so I think I'll get out and then I will probably take a shot at them with my short bow. So, uh, 
So that is, let's see. Oh God, that's a two. Um, that is a two. All right. I will say a couple of things, uh, Tana, because you don't take up the full space of a person and there's only two people allowed on the small thing that you're on. Um, it is now Adara, Tana, and Trouble on this small little piece of somewhat dry land. Nobody else can fit. If you're in the water, you're stuck in the water, unfortunately. Uh, that does not hit Trouble. Um, are you doing anything else on your turn? Besides... Um besides crying out of frustration that I <laughs> totally missed this shot. Whiffed it. Whiffed um, it in the waves. You know, you'd be like, oh, right in the water. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm done. That's my turn. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Tana, you're up. Um, okay. Uh... I took mostly utility. The magic <laughs> missile. That's what we'll do. Cool. Okay. Um, let's see. We're gonna go. We're gonna go low. Low and slow. Uh, you, there's still one by me, so we'll go for that one. Uh, first level. That's three. Uh, first one is three points. Second one, four points. Last one, also four points. Okay. Take what that. is the map on that? Uh, eight, 11 force damage. Ooh. Awesome. Okay. Uh, that'll be her turn. Oops, I'm going to round up on that. So it's going to be that. Perfect. All right. Adara. realizing i'm muted uh yeah is there a way so i have this thing called magic circle which basically says that i can um basically choose a point and then for a 10 foot radius creatures cannot enter it and they have disadvantage on any attacks against creatures in this is there a way that i can position this so it encapsulates the party and does not get the ghost so the ghosts are like on the outside so it's like a lie. I will say this, um, it is like, it is like a, it's a 10 foot situation. It'll be right on the edge. Okay, I will allow it if everybody mm -hmm. else uses their movement on their turn to either get right next to the dry land or is on the dry land and already three of you are on it. So yes. right now, if you would cast it, only the three of you would be affected. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. So I'm pretty sure it's what P and soaring that would both need to be on there. So if you want to yeah. make that announcement as a free action that like everybody get over here, you are more than welcome to. Okay. So can I say everybody get over here and then uh, hold my action until everyone is over here to cast magic circle? Yeah, absolutely. So you want to use that like as a reaction if one of, if, like one of those two people gets over and they're the last one. Yeah, basically just ask everybody, get over here and then Perfect. just cast it down. Awesome. All right, uh, great, soaring. Here's what's going on. Uh, <laughs> I used your turn um, to scoot you over. You didn't take any damage or anything. Um, Here's here's the situation. I don't know if you just heard, but Adara just gave the announcement for everybody to be on to dry land ASAP. So if you would like, you can go over to dry land where I put you, unfortunately. I have given you an opportunity attack from the ghost if they so choose. They did not choose to last time. However, they might. So it's up to you if you want to use all of your movement like as a dash and do nothing else and get over to where everybody else is or only use half of your movement go straight through touch land and maybe take an opportunity attack i'll i'll go i'll risk the opportunity attack um because 
yeah, uh, I don't really care, and I can I can ready at that point a sacred flame in case the ghost try to make any moves towards us as Adar is casting or has casted that spell. Perfect. Um, also, your AC is eighteen. That's a nineteen to hit. Um, Tana gave you haste. So actually, with haste, you get an extra action. Read read the thing. You you take your own turn. I fully <laughs> I fully forgot that you get a full extra action, right? You do, right? I didn't actually I didn't actually. Yep. I I, yeah, I get action. another attack. Um or oh. I can dash. Okay. Right? So, yeah, you can if you want to just dash, then mm -hmm. no, ignore what I said. <laughs> I can disengage so they can't take an opportunity attack and, and or I can move, disengage, move if I need to. But uh, yeah, that would be a great way to ensure a big giant fuck you uh, to the ghost. You can't touch me. <laughs> so yeah, that's yeah. what I'll do. That's how I use yeah. haste and uh, move all the way over there and still ready the, the spell in case they, they become aggressive. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Uh, P, that is you. How far am I from uh, the the clothing itself? Like, where is the clothing? Oh, um, let me ask Treble. Did you take it or did you just examine it and leave it on the driftwood? Oh, no, I definitely took that. <laughs> then you're about 10 feet from Treble, P. <laughs> So I'm wondering if I could uh, try to cast Dispel Magic on it. On the clothing? Yeah, to see if that would do something with these ghosts. If they're, like, going to calm down. <laughs> sure, you can absolutely try. Go ahead. You're casting Dispel Magic on the clothes? Yes. Cool. Um, nothing visibly happens. Okay. Yeah. Is that all you're doing on your turn? Because you're the only one that has yet to go over to the thing, and you still have, uh, you still have movement if you want to get over there. Um, yeah, I'll get over there. Okay. Uh, that triggers Adara's reaction. Adara, um, your spell is now in effect. Um, let me read that real quick. And that is perfect. Great. Okay. And that is wonderful. That's the ghost's turn. Uh, Soaring, remind me what you were casting again. I was holding a sacred flame if they if they were aggressive within 60 feet. Okay, yeah. I mean, as soon as all of you guys get over there and they see the circle, they are charging it. So I will say you can let loose your sacred flame if you wish. Okay. So yeah, that is a DC 17 dex check um, for the target. That's a which... 14 and a 7. <laughs> it's just it's just one target it is just one. Oh, just um, one okay yeah it, it doesn't jump or anything i was I, I believe that's another spell but um yeah so 2d8 without advantage all right so 12 damage 12. radiant what? damage radiant perfect all right the one of them is looking pretty hurt All right, good deal. So, also, what does that do to them? They, perfect, there's runes. You said we're doing this for, yep. Okay, I can't enter the cylinder. You guys are all in the cylinder, so they can't attack you. Cool. They can try, but they have disadvantage, charisma? and if they want to enter, they have to make a charisma saving throw against 19, so. Interesting. Yeah. I will say this, perfect. You guys all watch as the ghost's eyes glow red again for a moment before they both look at each other, lower their hands, and then simultaneously look further inside the cave 
at the opening as a third ghost materializes from deeper inside the cave. And that is where we're going to end our session. You guys are all still in initiative, but that is it for this evening. So I will say this. Um, production, let me know in chat if we are raiding anybody. Um, until then, I would like everybody once again to remind me who you're playing, um, just so chat knows, and then we will exit. So I will start with uh, JJ. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. My name is JJ, and I am playing Trouble Tea Leaf, the halfling rogue um, in this story. Uh, where can we find you when we leave? Oh, so um, you can find me on Twitter at JJ underscore Cray, where I post um, my content for my TTRPG streams, cooking streams. Um, and you can find me on Twitch at BandReaper97. Great. Thank you. All right. Baba Yaga. Hi, I'm Baba Yaga. I've been playing Soaring Snack Hadone, uh, the Air Ganassi Orc something wizard um wizard wow not a wizard could be but not a wizard i don't know where that came from um but yeah so i i'm i'm tired i'm i'm exhausted uh and you can find me on twitter at shut up sarah or on girls run these worlds and uh play nerves allies perfect thank you uh, hi goblin uh, hey everyone, I'm Sarah. I've been playing Tana Grace from Glimpsebark. You can find me all over the internet as the Hype Goblin, uh, doing a whole bunch of cosplay and TTRPG content on all platforms except for Facebook. Sorry. <laughs> I love that. Great. Theta. Hi, I'm Theta. I was playing Adara, another wizard. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter, itch, and wherever else I randomly show up. Uh, uh, Bing Su Jung, where, and I make games and play games. That's kind of most of what I do. Great. Awesome. Last but not least, Beth. Hey, uh, my name is Beth. I've been playing P, our centaur cleric for the evening. Um, well, always a centaur cleric, but it was this evening we were playing. You get it. Uh, long day for sure. Um, and you can find me over on Indigo Chameleon once in a while, uh, passively on Twitter, um, or otherwise just look inside yourselves and you will find peace and love. <laughs> that's really, that's really great. Wow. Well, I don't really want to say anything about myself after that, uh, but I'm, I'm Mo Katz, your DM and dungeon mistress. Uh, you can find me on Twitter sometimes. Um, at Mother O'Cats with a Z. And with that, we are going to raid uh, G Game Nights this evening. Um, and that is Savvy and Val, I've been told. So that's uh, that's really great. We're going to go raid them, so stick around if you'd like to do that. Um, and until then, uh, next week, we will miss you here on Candle Game Mysteries. But we'll see you next Friday at 7. Everybody have a great evening, and we'll see you in the raid. Hey! <laughs>